Hi everybody and welcome to another HyperMesh tutorial. In the last video we looked at how to create a geometry in the geometry tab and we create a solid um, like this cone and this is actually a surface this time, this is the surface of a cone. And we then looked at how to auto mesh a geometry. So you go into auto mesh and you can auto mesh from a surface like this and you select the surfaces and you can pick this uh, element size and the type of mesh, hit mesh and then you're able to actually modify the number of nodes along the surface to make it look better than this. So we can say set it to 24 on both, so that's an even number on each side, and create this nice looking quad mesh. So um, this is where we left off last video, and digging a little further, I wanted to give some examples of difficult circumstances that you may find yourself in when you're dealing with meshing, because you're not always gonna have a perfect geometry to work with like this cone, and they're not always going to be easy to mesh. So to start off, um, I've kind of pre-made this half cone surface where you've got the base of the cone, a top of the cone, and one side of it um, in the form of a surface, but you have this one side missing. Or missing. So what happens, what, how do you mesh this other side um, when you're given this? Well, there's a few ways to do it, and I'll just be showing one way. What you can do is um, you can go into 2D and you can go into spin down here because uh, this is this like set of specialized functions and all of these different things do um, some different things. Well, you know, to start off, I'll show you ruled. This is one way you can connect a mesh to another mesh, and it's kind of like um, if you say, let's, you're probably going to start off a node list. So if you say, let's connect these three nodes to these three nodes it's just going to create this like bridge between them and you can then modify this obviously like in uh, auto mesh but you're not really following this curvature right so um and also what i was doing right here this is a handy tip is whenever you're in something like ruled or anything else that uses node lists or lines you can click on the option itself and bring up like a little mini window and you can actually say instead of clicking by list where you have to click each one in order you can click by path and these buttons erase the nodes that are currently selected so what you can do with the path is you can click in one area and click further down the line and it's going to automatically select everything along that path now a drawback is it's going to kind of take some liberties into how it gets there so it may not work the best if you're moving along a really big complicated mesh but for something simple like this it's really handy and it's it's pretty nice for time saving techniques um, what else was I going to say so how, how do we actually follow this geometry well what you can do is oh so important was the order of the nodes in ruled matters so if you do those three nodes again, but you select the first one, select the second one over here, and then select this one, and then you do off order, it's just gonna fail. Or it's gonna look really bad because it the order matters. Just, just know that. So uh, back to what I was saying, if you want to actually follow this geometry, you have to select all nodes along this path. So what you can do is click up here, click up to the top, wrap it around to the other side and then into the corner. It doesn't really matter where you start and end as long as the two different sets don't have uh, nodes in each, like as long as they don't have duplicate nodes. So if this node is in this part path, you can't put it in this path too, or else it's gonna fail again. So the second one, take it this way and they have to be in the same direction too. So if you're going this way, you want this to move this way and then you can hit create and it's gonna kind of do an okay job but you've you know it's not it's not right you know so um this isn't really optimal of what you want to do this kind of looks more like a nuclear silo or something opposed to just a cone so there's not too much you can do to fix that with rule this is a more basic form of con connecting meshes so we want to reject that and back out and what we want to go to is drag um actually i mean spin and make sure you're in spin elements and right here you're going to select the two-dimensional elements that you want to spin around 
this geometry and you're going to select the don't worry about 3d element phases by nodes you're going to select the axis of spin um, or the axis that you want the elements to spin around and that's going to be the y-axis in this case and this may be pretty limited in terms of ways you can use it because you're not always going to have a cone directly in the middle of the y-axis but it's just a nice thing to know how to do you can also then go to angle and make it 180 degrees since we're going 180 degrees and there's other ways you can do this where you don't actually know the angles but just for now we're going to do this we also know that there's 12 elements along this because whenever i made it there was 24 total so we're going to say 12 elements along the spin and we're going to leave the biasing linear and we're going to hit spin plus well it went the wrong way so we want to hit reject and hit spin minus and oh there's an issue so remember in the last video how i said this is going to be your uh, bane of existence is the elements to current component well it's because the elements are going into the highlighted current component which is not the one that i'm working in so we want to reject that and we can either uh, change this to original component which is now going to put them here or we can just right click this and make current either way so we'll do it again spin and now you're going to have this surface created um, equal to this other side but if you look down here um, this mesh isn't right right so this side is all node to node and this is not matching up correctly so what do you do if you encounter a situation like this well you can remesh um, 2d meshes so if you go into auto mesh and instead of clicking surfaces you want to hit this down arrow and you can go to elements and then you can select all the elements down here and a nice tip if you've got elements along a kind of flat face like this you can click any of these elements click this uh, button of elements and then hit by face and it's going to select all of them along this face and this is kind of an arbitrary thing there's no really way to change the curvature or the values that it just selects where the face is but it's a nice way to select elements along a flat or a pretty flat face and then what you can then do is change everything just like before you can change the element size and hit mesh and now you've got this new mesh which you can then match the number of elements on this side as this side so we can make this 11 or 12 I'm not sure oh there's one down here I see make it 12 so now you're going to have these equal, equally spaced elements down here, and they're going to match up here. Now, before you go on, um, doing something like this where you're not including these elements or these elements in the mesh of this side, these aren't going to be connected. And you're going to know they're not connected because this line is red. And that's only if you're using a surface to mesh things. So if you want to fix that, I'm not sure if that's right. Don't quote me on that. So if you want to fix that, you want to go to Tool and Edges, and then you can do Component where it just selects the entire component, or you can down arrow and click Elements and uh, not select Shift, left click, drag, to select all of the elements, and then hit Preview Equivalents, and it's going to show the elements that are duplicate. So what it's basically doing is this element has these four nodes, this element has these four nodes but these nodes are different from the nodes that are included in this element so in the modeling world you don't want that that's called a duplicate node because those nodes aren't going to interact with each other because they're not technically the same node so within this element and this element they're using the same node so that they're actually connected so this is a way that you merge nodes that are duplicates and if you you can change the tolerance so this is the distance between two nodes to merge them and you can equivalence at different IDs, so the lower ID or the higher ID, and then you can hit equivalence. Okay, and now the nodes are the same IDs. So moving on with this idea of challenging circumstances, you can then find yourself with a hole. And I know these are all really basic examples with these cones, but say you have a mesh structure um, where you only have surfaces to the three sides and one side is missing and you wonder how how do I fix this well what you can do is you can go to 2d and you can drive you blah you can try ruled again and you can select 
these elements or these nodes and then hit create and then it's going to do this and create um, your elements along the surface and that's fine um, you can also go to spline and spline is one long continuous uh, node set or set of lines um, right now we're going to use nodes and change the path and you can select all of the nodes along this uh, surface that you need uh, meshed and then you can hit create and it's going to automatically mesh this circle so that's really nice and really useful and these functions can all be used with surfaces as well so if you want to do it on the surface level you can go to geometry and then surface edit and oh, that's not right you go to surfaces not surface edit and then you've got spline here, you've got ruled here, and it's the same idea where you have a list of lines, and then you've got skin here. And the difference between uh, ruled and spline in a basic sense is that spline uh, allows you to keep the curvature from the points. So um, you don't have to, like here, if, tan if uh, you don't want to keep tangency, uh, you can click it and it create, it's just going to create a flat surface and it's not going to uh, keep the curvature of the sides but if you hit keep it's going to create this dome like structure right and then if you want to match that you can then go to 2D again elements, action not elements, surfaces click and there you go um, so and if you see these are a little different so you can go to mesh style and go to circle set all and this is a circumstance where you're going to have issues with trying to work out the best way to get this to look clean um, and it just it would take some time just to kind of finick with it and mess with the different biasing and all these different things but um, that's pretty much the gist of it and um, something else that you can do um, while I'm on this is you can offset so let's say you want to make a uh, 2D structure with uh, an inner and an outer okay so we can go to just go again we can go to element offset within the 2D panel and then you can either make a solid which is actually going to extrude it as a solid layer or we can make it a shell or a show offset and show offsets actually going to offset this shell outward so we can select them all and say on geometry to follow you can just click the same elements it's fine and then let's offset it by five millimeters Ooh, maybe going the wrong way So it shrunk it. So you can also make this inner and outer shell like I was talking about. If you go to shell layers and you select all the elements and you go to elements to follow, select the elements again, and you go to number of layers. So let's just say we want, I think one will work, and then initial offset zero, total thickness that is fine. And then hit offset plus and see if this works. And it worked. So now you have an inner surface and this outer surface and the reason it's offsetting at this angle is because it's just following the normal of the element and there's ways you can get around that but for now um, just know that uh, you can do this and offset it outwards and if you mask this you'll be able to see that this is not a solid it's just a shell in and out you can also do solid layers like i was saying where you're able to um, determine the amount of layers that you want to extrude it so we can just do one and make one thick layer and total thickness you can set this whatever five is fine so it's going to be one five millimeter thick element and you can hit offset and it's just going to pull these out outward like this and then you can use blank up here and shift drag and then mask and now you see that these are solids 
these are just a few quick little um, tips and pointers that you can use, but um, that's going to be it for this video, and I'll keep making some more videos about uh, little tools that will help you along the way. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.